A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, meaning the United States in the late 1800s, what seemed to be a prosperous and wealthy nation covered in gold was actually an economic and political catastrophe. One of the infamous scandals of the Gilded Age was the Boss Tweed Ring. Thankfully, a few investigative journalists, known as muckrakers, decided to expose such manipulative scammers. In fact, this form of reporting became so frequent that it became known as yellow journalism. One of the most kick-ass yellow journalists was a woman named Nellie Bly. Cinco de Mayo, 1864, is a day to remember because that's when she was born in Cochran's Mills, Pennsylvania with her brothers and her sisters. They called her Liz with Jane Cochran. Before she got a miss when she was young, her father died yet Michael Cochran passed away. He wrote no will, so then they lost all their money. Her mama remarried, yes she does what she can. To help them out of debt, she married an abusive man. During the divorce, Liz would call that man a drunk, but once they won the case, their finances is sunk. She went to learn her teeth, but her money vanished with a scammer, so then she was forced to leave in a hasty, hurried manner. Sign the lonely orphan. Though her grammar lacked the nest, Pittsburgh Dispatch was impressed. They saw that she could fight, so they called her up to write. She wrote one article with the girl puzzle. They forced her back to women's pages, giving her a muzzle. Gave her a fake name, she was now Nellie Bly. But they couldn't contain her, she wrote about women on the fly. She convinced them to let her go down to Mexico. They were misrepresented, most wrongfully so. But then she got expelled by the Mexican government. She left the dispatch to gain some self empowerment. She said, Goodbye, Pittsburgh, it's been a good time. New York, get ready for Nellie Bly. When Bly made it to New York, you could often see her banging down some dollars looking for a job transfer to the New York world. She made a proposition, they rejected it and sent her on a mad mission. Pretend to be insane and go to Blackwell's Island. Consumers were whispered about this abusive asylum. She studied and practiced making faces in the mirror. Determined for employment, this act could bring her nearer. Nellie was original, some reporting's what she did. She revealed the corruption that the institutions hid. They were forced into cold bath, beat by the psychopaths and nurses. Swore curses, we were versus the perverse. Lack of clothes showed their apathy. The food increased our maladies. The doctors lacked honor, we do better with some fosters. The diagnosed were desolate. Society said they would not fit women with the immigrants who were treated with maliciousness. As the wagon was rapidly driven through the beautiful lawns up to the asylum, my feelings of satisfaction at having attained the object of my work were greatly dampened by the looks of distress on the faces of my companions. It was only a half-hearted and apologetic denial that the world could get from the asylum authorities regarding Nellie Bly's terrible accusations, a large amount of referring to someone else, a refusal to ring forth the accused person, and a female cry of, it can't be so. The reporter was not permitted to see the female attendants whom Nellie charges with atrocious cruelty towards feeble women and the possible truth of this charge was admitted after a left-handed fashion. The charge the patients were plunged into a cold bath was denied, and concerning the bathing of many women in a single water, Superintendent Dent could only say, a nurse who did this would be discharged. She discovered she made the study greater with the New York World paper.